not not uh, more confidence than than we need for respect then and then we are going to do that sure you also had one or two chances tonight i saw your frustration on the sideline at not being able to take those chances yeah, we, we could score one goal but uh, of course arsenal put a lot of pressure in contra attack they were dangerous but it's two nil and we have to think about the <clears throat> the next game and uh, europa league final for your last match in back is that got a nice ring to it <laughs> <laughs> yeah um you know i haven't thought about that but uh, hopefully less uh, we started off this uh, first leg really well so hopefully we can finish off the job and, and get ourselves in the hat for the next round well, a great night for Aaron Ramsey, a brilliant start for the Gunners as well in this tie. It was lovely play from Arsenal in the build-up to that opening goal for Ramsey, Glenn, but w was there a, a possible foul from Lacazette in the build-up to that? Possibly, yes, yeah. You see Lacazette just sort of easing the player. It depends on whether the referee's got his eyes on that situation. Some refs would have given it. Here he is, here, look, just see Lacazette just ease him off the ball really <laughs> i'm not so sure any ref would give that as a foul i must say but what a lovely one touch two touch football it really was runners off the ball ramsey gets himself into that box which he is such a threat there's there's the foul that he's lent into him it is a foul i think that's a 50 50 call some will give some won't. but look at the way they've played look one touch one touch one touch and when you have movement on the back of play like that you can't defend it you can't stay with runners, and Ramsey tucks it away beautifully, just stays over the top of the ball, and he had a chance very similar right at the end, but he didn't do that, he limped back. So, a uh, great start for Arsenal it was. And that decision to, to let him go on a free is, is looking yeah. worse with, with every great game that he plays for them at the moment. I think Ramsey will have got a few texts from his future Juventus <laughs> teammates thanking him for that win yeah. against Napoli. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure he would have. The second goal, James, came from a, a deflected shot from Lucas Torreira. It has been given, though, as a Koulibaly own goal, but, but still. Making it 2 0 for Arsenal just before half a half an hour in this game. Sliding doors, Lindsay, because the only other offer Torreira had in the summer was to go to Napoli, and instead he scored against them. And you see, it's kind of summed up Napoli tonight. Sloppy, um, Arsenal first to the ball, more aggressive. And to be honest, Torreira does it all himself. Yes, he gets a little bit fortunate, and Koulibaly comes across there, and the deflection puts it past Meret. But to be honest, I think he created his own luck by winning the ball in the first place and the turn on Fabian Ruiz to get the shot off as well. Yeah, well, well, Aaron Ramsey could have pleased his future employers even more if, if he got another one. He, they had some good chances, Arsenal, didn't they, Glenn, to, to make it more comfortable? They certainly did. I mean, this is a good play. I mean, he's picked up a lovely look, 3v2 from a corner. Napoli went asleep. But this was Arsenal in the latter part of the game breaking on Napoli. La Napoli, I think, went for the away goal to try and keep this tie alive. But if you, if you, if you open yourself up, Arsenal will break on you. There's a magnificent... This is the one. This could kill the tie completely, James, could not it? Absolutely. I mean, I think uh, it's maybe a, an easier chance than the first one yeah. that Ramsey had. You can see how yeah. disappointed he is with himself because that would have completely put this tie to bed. And Napoli will be disappointed with, with their performance tonight because they could have got a vital away goal. There was a bad miss, James, for, from Insigne and possibly an even worse one for Zielinski. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's on a plate for Insigne there. And someone who is as technically gifted as he is, who can put the ball anywhere, be very disappointed not to have even hit the target there. And you see Insigne there, turning provider for, for Zielinski, just never seems to be convinced about what he's going to do there, Zielinski yeah. Glenn. He's desperate to get it on his right foot. He's got to let it come across his body, I'm afraid, with his, with his left foot, and he just tucks it in the corner. And that's the moments, that's the, you know, the top class players just open their body up and that's in the bottom corner and they've come away with the away goal and that's the difference at that level. Is that going to be enough for, for Arsenal given their away form at the moment? One win in ten in the league, they've lost the last two away games in the Europa League as well. Yeah, they're fragile away from home, there's no doubt about that. Um, they've got to go there, it's not over. That's why Ramsey's chance was massive to them. Missing that chance, I think the game's dead and buried now, the second tie at 3-0. But, you know, if, if Napoli score, and they, they're capable of scoring, they can open up any team. If they score early on in that, in that game, that's going to be a real game on. That could go either way. And uh, that tie is still balanced if the first goal goes, you know, to Napoli. I think that's going to be a tough job over there. They've been a bit hit and miss of late, Napoli, James. How are they looking at home? They've looked good at home. But as you mentioned, I think their focus is very much on this competition because they're 20 
points off the top of the table for their home and dry in terms of Champions League qualification for next season. So winning this is what it comes down to, and it will, it, when it comes to judging Carlo Ancelotti's first season, it'll come up ultimately down to the success that they have in this competition or failure. Yeah, absolutely. A big game for them next week. Arsenal very much in the driving seat in that one. But would Chelsea also be on the right path to the semi-finals? They were on their travels in the Czech Republic to face Slavia Prague. That's next. There are four nicely poised Champions League quarter-final second legs to look forward to on BT Sport next week. On Tuesday, Manchester United have to overturn a one-goal deficit against Barcelona. That's on 2HD and 4K UHD. And Juventus Ajax is all square at one each. You can see that game on 3HD. And then on Wednesday, there is the mouth-watering return tie between Manchester City and Tottenham with the home side a goal behind and with it all to do to keep the quadruple dream alive. Coverage is on 2HD and in 4 Okay, and Liverpool have the comfort of a two-goal cushion to defend in Porto. That one is on 3 HD. But it's back to the Europa League now and Chelsea travelled east to face Slavia Prague in a partially closed stadium as punishment for the host fan misdemeanours. Your commentators are Steve Bauer and Nigel Spatman. Slavia Prague are without influential midfielder Thomas Sutek through suspension. Their top scorer is the Slovakian Miroslav Stok, who made five substitute appearances for Chelsea ten years ago. Vladimir Kufal is back from a ban, having missed the second leg against Sevilla. Chelsea make seven changes from Monday's Premier League win against West Ham. Only Kepa, Aspilicueta, Rudiger and Jorginho remain. The Europa League's top scorer, Olivier Giroud, looks to add to his nine goals in the competition so far. Eddie Nazar is amongst the substitutes. Matteo Sarri's message clear yesterday. They have to remain compact and defend very well. Any team that scores six goals against Sevilla have to be respected. Jorginho with the foul. It is in from Stock. Oh, it's an inviting one. Yeah, they're a big team. A lovely ball in from Stock. Nice and flat with pace on it. They're all attacking it. And I think it's Delhi around the back who just puts it wide. Early warning for Chelsea. Crowd. Oh, Kepa, oh, that second time. Savchik it was with the effort. Really good effort as well. Just turned on it, opened up, hit the shot. The pace on the ball made it very difficult for Kepa there. Off his chest, he recovered well. Here's Aspilicueta. Trying to find Giroud. The long legs of Delhi were important there. It's Pedro. Now Willian tried the bender. What an effort against the crossbar. Brilliant effort, but a good passage of play for Chelsea as well. The first time they've really pegged Travia Prague back in there. But he comes in inside Kufal. Shot is beating the goalkeeper. All ends up. He hits the crossbar and he pinged that Willian. Goalkeeper beating all ends up. Quickly finds Barkley. He's only got Giroud ahead of him. Oh, but there was a slip by the defender. And Giroud is offside. He didn't time his run. And Gallo and Gaggi lost his footing. He lost his footing. Giroud's just offside. The correct decision. If he carried on running and hadn't fallen over, Giroud was going to be in on goal. William. Barkley powering to his left. Giroud wants it at the back post. He's waiting again here, Giroud. Kufal in the way, Chelsea corner. I have to say, that's so disappointing from Chelsea's point of view. They've got four on three there. Giroud makes a really good run round the back. The ball doesn't come. William. Rudiger with the swing. Good save by Kona, the goalkeeper. And then away by Kral. That's an excellent save by Kohler there, came through a lot of bodies as well. Rudiger kept that down really well for a centre-back. More like it from Chelsea. 
That's all right. Willian's touch. He's got it back, Willian. And still! Right across the face from the Brazilian. Oh, that's a lovely interchange. Willian, Giroud. Can he find the finish? He couldn't. But this was the hit from Rudiger going away from goal. Kicks it down really well on the volley. Goal, a strong right foot. Brilliant clearance from the goalkeeper. Doesn't matter how you keep it out, as long as you keep it out. That's come through a lot of bodies. Really good reactions. And this is Willian with the shot on his left foot. Just drags it wide at that left-hand post. Traore. Goes for goal himself. Kepa required a full stretch. A really good save from Kepa. But Traore had just opened up for him. He had runners to his left. Took players away. It's a really good strike. Good height for the goalkeeper Kepa to push round the post. I'd expect him to save this. But it's still a really good save. Chelsea unbeaten in six games against teams from the Czech Republic. And first ever trip to his country. It was led by Glenn Hoddle. He was manager back in 1994. Ball forward. Kepa again doesn't deal with it and is then forced to make the save to deny Borrell. Well, he made up for his own error there, the Chelsea goalkeeper. And that's again, Kepa again flapping at it. He recovers well to make the save from Borrell. Perel, the left back, loves getting forward. Both fullbacks have really got forward well, but again, it's a cross into the box. That is his weakness. I think teams are starting to kick that out with Kepa at the moment. Loftus cheek. William. Inside the last five minutes. Free header! Marcus Alonso! From nowhere to knock Chelsea in front with what could be a pivotal late goal. His third of the season, his second in this competition this season. And having ridden their luck, Chelsea have the lead. Well, it's good movement from Alonso, but it's a beautiful curling weighted ball in from Willian. Looking for the runner, he's picking Alonso out. That's a beautiful ball in, the right height for him to attack. He's so good in the air, Alonso, in the 18-yard box again. He's onside, can he finish? Yes, he can. Cola, absolutely no chance. Chelsea in the driving seat. Maurizio, how close to what you expected was that match, that tough match in Prague? Oh, I expected uh, a very difficult match, and uh, the match uh, was really very difficult, uh, especially in the first half. They were very, very aggressive. But it was uh, really very difficult uh, to to press them, and we were in trouble. Uh, but uh, then uh, we played better, I think, in the second half. And so at the end, uh, we deserved uh, the, to win. But uh, they played a really very good match. But uh, we knew we knew that uh, these opponents uh, are really very very difficult to. To play, it's very difficult to face them uh, because they 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 are a physical team, but uh, a dynamic team. They uh, very aggressive. It's uh, really very difficult to play here, but uh, now we have to think uh, to the second leg because uh, they are really dangerous, also away. So Chelsea take a 1-0 lead into the second leg. I know when we watched the game earlier, Glenn, you really felt Chelsea got, a, got away with one tonight. Well, they did because they were, they were poor themselves. They were well under par. And uh, Prague, actually, how they lost that game, I don't know. They were very disciplined in the way they played. Uh, they almost went old school, man for man in many ways. But they were sloppy, Chelsea. They gave too much space away. Here's one example. This happened all night, though. Nice turn, lovely shot, straight down the goalkeeper's throat. Got a little bit fortunate. And, the, and the, this break here, look at the space that they've given. There's too many people in the penalty area. No one sort of balancing the game off defensively. And they end up with three versus two. Blue shirts chasing. Kepa's got to pull off another great save. And this is was the picture. It was a pattern. It wasn't a one-off these. This happened time and time again. Kepa makes the first save. Great save, that reaction. But Aspilicueta could have given him a shout. Might have headed it away because uh, that epitomised how they played.
very sloppy and they got away with it. But they came up against a side that was so disciplined. I've never seen for many years a team in midfield almost old school go man for man. Yeah, it's like confident after yeah. knocking Sevilla out the five-time winners in the last round. Alonso in particular didn't have a, a good night at all, James, tonight, but he really stepped up with, with a big goal at the end. He did. It's funny how that happens, isn't it? Um, because I think Alonso's been poor for Chelsea this season. I think he's one of the players who's really suffered the change of manager because I think he played under Conte, a style that suited him, play, playing as a wing-back, playing further forward. And when he's played in this flat-back four, it's been a little bit more difficult, particularly when he's had to defend. And we saw that, I think, tonight. But can't take anything away from that finish. It's a fantastic fantastic header, Glenn. Yeah, it's a great header, but the ball as well from Willian is absolutely spot on. He was the on. best player tonight, he did was. you think? From the start, he hit the bar in the first half. He was at it. He looked like he wanted to be out there. I, I just said to James that we covered the game and I saw a Chelsea team that half the team were quite unsure. They didn't really want to be there, if I'm honest. They had their minds somewhere else. You thought that was a immense, immense yeah. issue tonight? Yeah, I do. I really do. There's a few players out there that didn't. They were a bit sulky. And William wasn't one of them. And in the end, he's, he's produced a bit of magic that has got him off the hook. It was a great header. It yeah. really was. But he, it, it was the ball that made the goal, not really his movement, Alonso. They just drifted in. He didn't make any cute run. It was laid on a plate. And... Uh, Credit to William. Could that have anything to do with the, the Liverpool game on Sunday? Some of these players will know yeah. that starting tonight, they, they won't be playing in I that think picture. there was a bit of a soul cup there with a few players. I've never seen people like Pedro Kovac Kovacic. I don't think he was at it. There was a few of them wondering, thinking about the weekend instead of saying, well, this is a this is a route to the Champions League as well as what we can do in the league. Mm. I think there's a few who have lost their places in the first team for the Premier League as well, who all of a sudden yeah. find themselves playing Europa League football, which they haven't played all season. And, and I think they probably all expected it to be easier tonight because they've made light work of more or less everyone so far in this competition. But Slavia Prague showing that they completely merit being where they are in this competition at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there was a one thing to, to tarnish things for Chelsea tonight. Off the pitch, some Chelsea fans were filmed singing uh, discriminatory chants in a bar directed at Liverpool forward Mo Salah. And it was reported that the Chelsea security staff recognised some of those fans and barred them from entering the stadium tonight. And the club have released this statement... It says Chelsea FC finds all forms of discriminatory behaviour abhorrent and where there is a clear evidence of Chelsea season ticket holders or members involved in such behaviour, we will take the strongest possible action against them. Such individuals are an embarrassment to the vast majority of Chelsea supporters who won't tolerate them in the club. Now, coming up next, we will be heading to Portugal to see Benfica take on one of the form sides in the competition so far. They're up against Eintracht Frankfurt. Thanks for staying with us as we head to Lisbon, where two-time losing finalist Benfica hosted Eintracht Frankfurt, who are unbeaten in the Europa League so far this season and haven't lost a competitive game in 2019. Commentary comes from Adam Virgo and Paul Dempsey. Samaris, Eintracht with the share of the possession. Benfica finding it hard to... Stitch it together. Now Gerard Felix. Oh, he's done it brilliantly there. Must be a penalty. Must be a penalty. The panic button was pressed very hard by Indica. Now watch the conclusion. A red card from Anthony Taylor to rub salt in this wound for Eintracht Frankfurt. I, I wonder truly whether Indica really needed to do that. What do you think, Adam? Well, I don't think he needed to. I think Kevin Trapp was coming out enough to close the angle down. I think Fernandes would need it have taken a quick shot there. Gerard Felix, what a little improvised ball. Just delicately put it through. And Dick had just kind of panicked in the end. The youngster, what a chance now. But one of the new stars for Benfica and indeed for Portugal, João Felix against Kevin Trapp. Trapp has conceded only one goal in six games. João Felix gives Benfica the lead. Eintracht, a goal down and down to ten men. Well, it's certainly a massive sigh of relief to see this penalty go in from João Felix. Slow run up. Just away there from Kevin Trapp in the end. Goes the right way. What a reception he gets. The 19-year-old. Jardel. Seldom gets out of second gear, Jardel, but that's not always the worst thing. Khan 
cameras about him. Not so there, however. Facio's giving it away and they're in trouble now, Benfica. It's Rebic. Luka Jovic. He's only gone and done it again. And Eintracht have levelled it, even though they're down to 10. And who else but Luka Jovic? Goal number 25. Well, it's just brilliant play from Sebastian Moda. And all of a sudden, they're through now. And when it goes through to Rebic, you're thinking you need a control pass to the man of the moment, Luka Jovic. I said they weren't out of this game. And they've reacted brilliantly. Grimaldo. Samaris. Well, what a change in the atmosphere. The confidence. Lifted again. Oh, what a hit from the edge of the box and fell way outside. The prodigy strikes again. Benfica restore their lead. Thanks to João Felix. Remember the name. What a hit. I just couldn't believe the power he got on the shot. Kevin Trapp, an experienced goalkeeper. I and mean, this has gone past him even before he's died for it. Should he be beaten from that distance? Doesn't move his feet quick enough, but you have to say, what an unexpected shot there. What a goal. That's a promising ball as well, and Rafa Silva's movement's been so good in this half. The save was a bit tentative. It's Jao Felix again. Place has come alight once more. Chervi! Tipped over the top by Trapp. That's a good reaction save there. Chervi just couldn't quite get the first touch out of his feet. Roda, Kostic, all the way through and in! Lakadimas couldn't keep it out. Eintracht has scored again. 2-2. They're looking for an offside here. Now remember, no VAR. But the flag did indicate the offside. Was it De Costa, I wonder? I think De Costa was in the way. Well, it was a good play there. I mean, it's a few offside. Into Gregor, De Costa. It's a good decision there. For me, it's a great call. Absolutely right. Under a little human chain here, Benfica. Trap wasn't coming for it, and it's turned in. And will this one count? It looks like it is going to count. And Benfica lead 3-1 here. Trap was caught out, the goalkeeper. Ruben Dias was certainly in there going for it. And did he get the last touch on this, I wonder? Well, look at Kevin Trapp's position. Goes for it and then he goes away. And it is the centre-half. Just attacks it really well. I have to look at Kevin Trapp. I'm not convinced that he's given a lot of confidence to his defenders. He has the man there. Let's just give it a massive goal now. And Vicker moving it nicely. Crisply once more. Felix for oh, a hat-trick. Oh, it's just getting better and better for Benfica. Jean Felix gets a hat-trick. Benfica lead 4-1 here. Just to win, it's a big opposition. Not to go too far forward, to close the space out. Just hold yourself back for the cutback. You look at youngsters coming on the scene at world level. Can they be the difference in the big games? Jean Felix has done that. It's a quality finish from him. You can see what the goal means to him. It means so much. Seferovic, is this his moment, Harry Seferovic? Kevin Trapp restores a bit of credibility. Good stop by the Eintracht Frankfurt goalkeeper against his old club mate. He's been reliable through the season, Kevin Trapp. He's had a slightly awkward night tonight. Letting themselves open in the back. Great first touch from the substitute. Just see his right foot there, making the save. Could he have gone on a crossing? So you expect him to make. De Guzman himself to take the corner. Keep an eye on Abraham here. He could be a real nuisance. Pazienza, it is with the header. Oh, and it's found its way into the corner. The former Porto man has struck here at Benfica. I try the back with real hope. Gonzalo Pazienza. The power is in the neck muscles. He just rises brilliantly there. And that's why they always say, header back from where the cross has come from. That is just unbelievable. That is such a great header. And what an important goal that could be. Brian Trapp, Frankfurt. Well, at 19 years, 152 days, Jao Felix has become the youngest scorer of a hat-trick in the Europa League. What a performance from him. What a game in Lisbon tonight as well. It all started for, from the penalty spot for him tonight, Glenn. Let's talk about the, the sending-off decision, first of all, from, from Endica. What were your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think, you've, by the letter of the law, 
you've got to say it's the goal scoring opportunities in the centre of the goals and it's the correct decision it really is but no one likes to see red cards being given out but there's the foul and it just clips him and he pushes him as well you can't say there's any attempt to no, play the ball there no, and, and I think it's the correct decision but the young man just sticks it in that bottom left hand corner of the, of the post takes it nice and uh, coolly that's a lovely strike a really good strike but you've got to say it's a goalkeeping error from trap he's got to get across and get a good hand to that but the kid looked really good all night and uh, look, he's opened his body up here trying to make runs and this is such a cool finish the power is on the cross and all he's tried to do you can try and hit that too hard and when you do that you lose control um, but he's just guided it off his foot and kept over the top of the ball and uh, that's why it's ended up in the back of the net but he looks a really good prospect yeah, doesn't yeah. he? Any chance they're going to loan him out to, to a club at a very cheap price like they did with Jovic, James? Or do you think, think they might nip that in the bud? They're trying to renegotiate his contract and put an even bigger buyout clause in we're talking about €120 million Euro for a 19 year old there's a lot of hype around him but I think believe it because we saw tonight that pass which kind of created the penalty Outstanding pass, set up Seferovic at the end as well. And for Ruben Diaz, his goal, it was a, a flick on from uh, from Felix at the, the, the near post that created that one as well. So, complete performance from him mm. tonight. Frankfurt not out of this though, are they? No. They did get the two goals tonight. Jovic, who, who is actually on loan from, from yeah. Benfica, will, will soon become a, a Frankfurt player and possibly go for loads of money. Got his 25th of the season tonight, James. Exactly, and this is one where Benfica have got it wrong um, because they let him go for, for nothing really, just €8 million, Euro, and that was his 25th goal of the season. Patienza getting a second away goal for them. And to be honest, for a team that was down to 10 men for, for after 20 minutes, mm. they've done very well to, to get something out of that tie. She had a lot of character to keep going. And that, that tie, as you say, is still very much in the balance. Uh, there's no doubt about it. And they're in good form as well. Yeah, and Chelsea will play the winner of that tie as well. OK, we've got one more game to bring you. And that is the all-Spanish clash between Villarreal and Valencia. Welcome back. Our final first leg tie from the Europa League quarterfinals comes from Spain's East Coast. Villarreal may have played out a thrilling 4 all draw with Barcelona recently, but they're still in a relegation scrap in La Liga. They welcomed near neighbours Valencia to the Estadio de la Ceramica. Your commentators are John Hutchison and Seb Hutchinson. Playing it back inside to get it. Geyer again, and they've got numbers in the penalty area, waiting for the cross. Here's Geddes, on to his right, he's gone down, and Oliver points to the spot. An early penalty for Valencia. Cáceres is in a position where he should never, ever be thinking of making a tackle. Geddes is going nowhere, he does have a little clip. And Michael Oliver has got himself in a very good position. Well, well. Danny Parejo, he missed a penalty against Rio Vallecano at the weekend, it was a team effort. Danny Parejo, his penalty saved again, but converted on the rebound by Guedes. The man who won the penalty puts away the rebound. Very good save, I mean there's so many players encroaching there trying to pick the bones out of that, but very alert is Guedes. We fancy him on the rebound from close distance. Ibora, good strength. And it's going to be another penalty. It's good play, little ball around the corner. Now the defender's in trouble. It looks like a penalty, little push from behind. And a shirt took it at the same time as well. Santi Gazzola missed a penalty against Real Betis at the weekend. Saw his penalty saved in that game. Can he make amends with the equaliser here? He does! Santi Cazorla from the spot. He gives the goalkeeper the eyes. It looks like he's putting it in the bottom right-hand corner but just whips that right angle through at the last minute. Quintillas ball in, cut out by Ron Caglia. They haven't cleared their lines here, and Vass going in. 
and he scrapped here and almost turned him by Chiquese. Gabriel diving in, still Chiquese. Mara Gaspar miscues it. Oh, and Cazorla couldn't keep his shot down. There's so much up the neck. Good pressure that from Villarreal. Good save from Neto. It's Chiquese. Oh, oh, fabulous opportunity again. Neto just getting there. I tell you what, he'd love that one back again, Chuck Wasey, because he went for the right technique. He saw the goalkeeper off his line, just needed a little bit more height on his chip, and he's certainly going to score from there. Explosion from Guy and ball across. Oh! And a winner, Shorty. And it's the man who never scores. He hasn't <laughs> scored for Valencia. His first Valencia goal, Daniel Vass. First of all, they work it really well. They work it to Guy around his left-hand side. He then gets towards the byline. He pulls a great ball back. And this is such a hard strike and such a high tariff effort on your weaker foot to A, connect with it, and then guide it. Will Valencia kill the tie here? Cheryshev. Oh. All across. And what a ball! And get it! And that may be that. As far... As this tie is concerned, Villarreal undone late on here. Two late goals for Valencia. He knows Guedes is there. Now, has he got the quality to find him? Well, he certainly has because he puts it a good 10 yards in front of him. And then Guedes just drills it into the floor over the goalkeeper. No one saw this scoreline coming five minutes ago. What a pass from Cheryshev. So Valencia with a 3-1 lead to bring back home to that second leg. And what a strong finish from them. Daniel Vaz's first goal for the club. What a one to score, Glenn. What a strike. It's his first goal for the club. He's not going to score another one like that, I can assure <laughs> you. It's, it's an absolute, what you call a humdinger. Poor play from Villarreal in the 89th minute to let him get down the left-hand side. But look at that. The technique, it's like, it's like he's like over the park playing with his mates. It's, not, it's carefree, he's just gone bosh have that goalkeeper and there is no way of any keeper in the world can save that. And two minutes, 33 seconds later, Guedes with his second of the night for, for a grandstand finish. And this has been the story of Villarreal's season, certainly recently, conceding late goals, which is why they're down near the bottom and fighting for their lives in, in La Liga, um, 18th at the, at the moment. And uh, we mentioned that Daniel Vasco, if he'd missed it, Guedes was queuing up behind him to put it in as well. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah good brace from the Portuguese, who was the hero against Krasnodar in the last round yeah. as well. And Cazorla scored a penalty tonight. He missed one at the weekend for Villarreal, who, of course, in a relegation battle. It was some really sad scenes, very upset about that. He did get the penalty, but any chance of a reunion with, with Arsenal now seems unlikely, doesn't it? It does seem unlikely, but then again, what we've seen in European competition 